Happy Trash Talk Day to all who celebrate. Letterman Rowe is in the building after practice number eight for Ohio State, and wide receivers and corners talked. A lot of fun was had here in the building. That's Tim May, the 41 year vet. That's Andy Backstrom. I'm just Spencer Holbrook. You already know all of that is already, though. Tim, um, one thing, one thing. What'd you learn uh, from today? Just one thing? Yeah. Well, now, now I'm trying to uh, right. run it through the blender and what I've come, you know, Jeremiah Smith was literally, you know, he didn't say this, but I'm paraphrasing. He was, he almost came into this world competing and has continued to do that despite all the accolades, uh, all the gushing that uh, Ryan Day has done about him in the last day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he came into this world competing and on top of that, uh, he is blessed with having all the tools necessary to compete. Uh, that's my biggest takeaway. This guy is the real deal. Ohio uh, Pro Football Hall of Famer, former Buckeye Chris Carter will tell you that. Chris Carter says one of the great, uh, one of the great uh, traits of the receivers who've come into Ohio State in recent years is patience, waiting your turn and getting your turn, like just like he had to do. But uh, in, the, in the case of Jeremiah Smith, he's making an exception. He thinks he'll be a factor from the first game on. And Jeremiah kind of embraced that. He goes, but if I'm not, you know, you know, we'll move on from that. But you clearly get the idea that this guy is sort of soft-spoken, at least off the field and on the field, he wants to put on a show. Uh, I'd call him a showman as much as I'd call him a great athlete. And uh, really looking forward to that uh, season opener against Akron. Yeah, Jeremiah Smith was asked, That's all I got. how do you handle all the attention you get? Because he gets maybe more attention than anyone else in this building. And he said, it's easy. You just don't go on social media. Don't pay attention to I think to it's it. a little bit harder than that, but uh, he makes it look easy at least. He sure does. Carnell Tate, by the way, loves the attention. He loves to talk about it. He says he's going to ball and he's going to talk his talk this year. You're getting this energy and this confidence. You can kind of tell he's from Chicago, just the way he's accepting and embracing everything that's coming his way this year. And you get the feeling that he's just ready to pop. And I think that's what sometimes happens with year two receivers. We've seen it in this program especially. And I think he's ready for that next step. You know, Brian Hartland was talking about how he can move anywhere. And Carnell Tate was like, yeah, I like that because you can't game plan around me. So whether it's in the slot, it's out wide, I think he's on the verge of a real big breakout, guys. And we've seen that in training camp so far. We'll stick with receivers here. We'll do a little bit more receiver talk before we get to corners because I'm going to keep talking about Brandon Ennis the way that I have. Uh, all summer and then leading into training camp and then he gets out in training camp and is really impressive. Brandon said he was, quote, disgusted by the, the Michigan game last year. He didn't play in it, but he was disgusted by it. And uh, the, the, uh, the little things that they didn't do correctly that he noticed on film, the, the film that he watched, he just, it, uh, it disgusted him. And so now he's taking a leadership role. He said he didn't even think he was gonna be a leader in this building until he saw Mecca do it. And then until he saw the Michigan game and he said, okay, I have, a, I have a lane here. I need to be a leader for this team. And that was before guys started to return as seniors. He might be one of the, the sleeper contenders for captain in his second year, if not for all of these leaders returning, because he really wants that. And he's challenged himself to be more vocal. He's challenged himself to go harder every single day. It's, it's making him be felt on the field, like Ryan Day said. I think he's starting to be felt in the locker room. And after his big media session, I just went up to him and I said, hey, you're an Oklahoma flip from South Florida who's only been in the building for 12 months. Why should anyone in the locker room listen to you? And he's like, because I do everything correctly. I try to do everything the right way. I try to be vocal on the, along the way and I make plays when I'm in the game. Hey, works for me, two yeah. thumbs up. I think he 14 is- 14 months, by the way. Okay, well, yeah. you know what I mean. I, know I think he is mean. due for- By the way, what do you think about that cotton ball? <laughs> I, he, I don't think anybody in this building cares about the Cotton Bowl anymore. But he, he was disgusted by That's the, the last one I remember. He was disgusted by the Michigan game, and you can tell that it has kind of ignited him. And I think he's due for a big year. Yeah, uh, I agree. And uh, and then flipping over the defensive backs, I was asking Tim Walton. You know, it's you can. The word culture gets thrown around a lot, right? And but sometimes by people who haven't developed it but think they're developing it, uh, nouveau coaches, etc. But there is no doubt about the culture in the cornerback room. Uh, but when you see Denzel Burke and Davis and Igbenosin competing like they're competing in practice, I mean, that, that's upper level stuff. That, that's pro football. In other words, you don't have to do it, but you're doing it. As Denzel Burke you know, talked to us in Indianapolis, the phrase he used, the work he did, the work you do in the dark, as he said, to get ready for a season meeting when no one's watching, et cetera. 
But he and Davis and Nick Benoist have both elevated their game, in my opinion, from even last year. And uh, it is a dynamic duo. And then you throw in Jordan Hancock into the middle of that duo uh, and uh, Jermaine Matthews, uh, maybe the best third corner in college football. I don't, you know, you know I'm talking about on one single team. Uh, it's pretty amazing the culture that Tim Walton has fostered there and these guys have bought into it. It's a real talking point today was the, the battles between Davis Benoson and Jeremiah Smith, between Brandon Ennis and Jordan Hancock and Jermaine Matthews. Like, there are legitimate just like dog fights between these two units. And the corners seem to be a little bit deeper right now than the wide receivers, but that doesn't mean that they're getting the best of them every single day. Um, but but it, is a, it is fun to see that competition, Andy. I think the word was used was barking. They bark at each other there we go. on the field. And look, they're trying, the corners are trying to take their game up to the next level. You know, Denzel Burke wants to be the first cornerback drafted in this entire draft class of 2025. I don't know if you looked at it, but it's stacked. Yes. And you've got a ton of guys, Benjamin Morris and Travis Hunter, you down the list. Will Johnson. Will Johnson, of course, in Michigan. There, there's a ton of really good cornerbacks. Denzel Burke wants to be number one off the board, and that's going to take a lot. Part of that's going to be jumping routes, making interceptions happen. He's the only person who's intercepted Will Howard so far in training camp. We saw it, jumped the route. Spencer, you asked about it. They're not just trying to go for PBUs this year. It's taking the ball away, turning over the offense, getting the ball back to their own offense. And we've been seeing that a little bit in training camp, and that's a way to get to the next step. Yeah, yeah. that's what former Ohio State coach John Cooper was barking about uh, after last year. You know, uh, second winningest coach in Ohio State history he goes, he goes, you know, back when he was around, they didn't talk about breakups. You know, that was just making a play. The interception is what makes the difference. And uh, all these guys are going for it. And speaking of barking, uh, Brandon Ennis claims that uh, Davis and Nick Benoist, and I'm paraphrasing here, must have some kind of Florida, Florida, former Florida football player in him somewhere, some way, with the way he trash talks, et cetera. So, there's a lot going on out there that people can't hear or don't see. Yeah, Brandon's seen a lot of good trash talk in his days uh, from his time in South Florida. He knows what it looks like. If he's telling you that Davidson and Nick Benoson, yeah. uh, Jermaine Matthews on that level. Is, are on that level, you should probably believe him because uh, I think he does it pretty well too. One of the things that I didn't expect to really learn today but definitely did about the cornerback room is that they all really see it from Will Howard. Like, if you're not a receiver, the next best place to go for information about how the quarterback is throwing the ball into the secondary is the secondary. I know that's kind of self-explanatory, but Denzel Burke said Will Howard has shown a lot. Like, you know, he was the first one to say, like, I need to see more from that guy, which was kind of blunt and brutal, I guess. But in hindsight, like, he needed to see more, and now he has seen more, and he thinks that Will Howard can be that guy. That's very interesting coming off the back of Ryan Day's press conference yesterday when we heard him talking about this progress that Will Howard's made. It continues to trend in a certain direction and if the secondary that is the best secondary in the country is even saying that I think we should take their word for it Tim. Yeah I agree. You know, I'm, I'm interested in talking to the safeties eventually just getting their, their take on it. Two of the best safeties in the country Yeah. on going against this Ohio State offense which has changed in my opinion. Dramatically is not the right term but is definitely changing from a yeah. tenor standpoint. Uh, getting more of the run game in there, and then seeing how Will Howard, what it's like trying to read that aspect of his game from the standpoint of manipulating the running game, while also clearly he is, just in our eyes, he has improved as a passer since he's been here. Physically, he's night and day, like Ryan Day threw out there the other, the other day, something like 2% uh, body fat. You know, he lost 2% body fat, yeah, yeah. yeah. If he was 2%. I, I didn't, but I didn't know what to make of that. Did he just lose 2% body fat, which wouldn't be that dramatic? No, it's dramatic. That's well, a lot of body fat. Well, but where'd you start? You know what I mean? That's always the deal. Right. It's like, I yeah, lost if I 10 pounds, but if you weighed yeah. 310, now you weigh 300, you know, you got a ways to go. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want, I want that clarified also. People need to learn how to ask quick follow questions like, I occasionally do because I don't care about the one question limit sometimes when you need to know clarification. But the point is, he's a different looking dude. Yeah, he and certainly is. Than when he showed up, much less what he's going to be like, uh, you know, August 31st. Devin Brown is in there pitching and trying really hard too. So that quarterback competition, I think it's got to come to a head sooner rather than later, like we talked about yesterday. But you, you've got to like the feedback you're getting, like you said, from the likes of. Uh, uh, not just Brandon Ennis and Carnell Tate and Jeremiah Smith, but also Denzel Burke well, and Davis Nick Benoson about 
how really well this guy's throwing the ball. Well, yeah, because if Denzel didn't think it, he wouldn't say it. No, he wouldn't. So if he's no. saying it, he really means it. Like yeah, because it, it, in Indianapolis three, four weeks ago, he wasn't saying what he's saying now. And I mean, this is not a knock on Ryan Day at all, right? If you're watching, thanks for watching, by the way. Uh, but like, Denzel's going to be more honest about the quarterback competition than, than probably Ryan Day is because Denzel will just tell you whatever he is on the very front of his mind and right. just be almost brutally honest about it. He's saying very good things about Will Howard. We should take his word for it. Um, but also, Will Howard is definitely not getting the best of all of these guys because this secondary is really, really good. So it's it's a great, great competition well, going, going on. one pick. In yeah, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. Well, he can also run the ball, and Carnell T called him a bowling ball. Yeah. Like, he's just hard to tackle, and they're seeing that clearly. Kind of don't want to hit it. Right, exactly. One more defensive back note, Lorenzo Styles. we got to talk to him. Seems like he's fully back now. He said practice four was when he was you know, able to fully participate in training camp. He's going to be a key for this defense because, you know, I asked Tim Walton about the nickel depth because I thought it was interesting that Jim Knowles said that was a concern for this team. Tim Walton backed that back, you know, he walked it back, said there was not really that much concern for this position. They're constantly cross-training guys at the position at nickel, and they're confident in what Lorenzo Styles can do. They're also confident in Jermaine Matthews if he needs to play there. And, you know, talking to Lorenzo Styles, it feels like it's night and day between when he first started the transition to the defense side of the ball to now. At first, he was able to compete man and man, but now with the zone coverage, he finally understands his drop, where he's supposed to be, and it seems like that understanding's heightened as well. Yeah, so and they, in, they, yeah, and in defense of Jim Knowles, he said that a week and a half ago. Right, so things changed, I mean, and Lorenzo came back. And clearly the nickel, it seems to have become more and more the domain of these extra corners, you know, right. for want of another term. Uh, so we'll see how that progresses. Yeah, it was fun. It was interesting talking to Jermaine Matthews about playing nickel and getting more comfortable. I'm a little sad because last year Jermaine was kind of one of those honest guys like Denzel. Today seemed a little bit more buttoned up, Seems like, which is a good thing. He seemed like he's matured a little bit. And, and I think that's one of the things that they challenged him to do was, was to take care of his business off the field the way he was on the field as a freshman. And I'm interested to see a, a, maybe a new Jermaine Matthews, a new and improved, I guess you could say. Um, Anything else, either of you, before like we go down? I like Jermaine Matthews. I mean, uh, just, there it is. I'm looking forward to it. I said this uh, many, several years ago. It was several years ago. Uh, I think it was 2015. I was, I was just looking forward to watching that defense play. I mean, how, you know how you, you go into a season and you're looking forward to the new quarterback, the new wide receiver, the new running back, and points they're going to put on the board. But I'm really looking forward to watching this defense play. Uh, it's too bad. Uh, that if they have their wherewithal, that the, it'll be three and outs. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there, there are some really good athletes on this team, on this defensive side of the ball. They're playing at a much bigger time level than they were even two years ago. And they're going to benefit so much by the veteran presence across the board. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to watching how this defense gets after it. Tim, I'm not going to lie. When you started that with, I remember back in 2015, I thought you were going to tell me that you scouted Jermaine as a 10-year-old. <laughs> no. Uh, I and mean, you were excited watching, to see him I in saw 2024. All those coming back from 20, 2014. Oh, I, yeah, I know what you yeah. mean now. I just yeah. uh, you you scouted Jermaine. 2003, should... same thing. They, neither one of those teams won a national championship, by the way. Well, that's coming bad. off years when they did. Oh, that's bad news. Yeah. Uh, Andy, anything else before we get out of here? I think we got it all. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds great. Got we're going to go get to work over there uh, and write a lot of stuff that goes on to lettermanrow.com. Go over there, get that full coverage right now. We're pumping out content like you've never seen before um, over at lettermanrow.com. Tim May, the 41-year vet, his content resides there. Andy Backstrom and me, Spencer Holbrook. We're just continuing to throw, uh, you know, drink out of a fire hose here in the woody uh, and then fire hose content out onto lettermanrow.com. Go there now, make sure you like the video, subscribe underneath. That really helps the YouTube channel. We'll see you back on the YouTube channel soon and we'll see you over at lettermanrow.com.